Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Lachlan and this is my booktube. If you like that kind of thing, you should totally subscribe. I need to talk to you today. About War of Two Queens by Jennifer Armentrout. This is the fourth book in the From Blood and Ash series, but it's technically the fifth book in the From Blood and Ash world. There's a, um, a prequel series that you need to read before this, so I'll have the order, the reading order listed down below if you want to read it. This is a vampire romance fantasy and yeah, let's just get into it. So first off, pat on the back to me for getting up early to film this video. I'm tired. So anyway, so okay, I took extensive notes. Yeah, extensive. So the beginning of this video will be spoiler free. So if you haven't read the book, then safe to watch. I'm going to save the spoilers for the end and I'll give a warning before that starts. If you haven't read the other books, then add Addie K. I don't know. That's you do you. This book starts off where um, Crown of Gilded Bones left off. Basically, Poppy is now a god and Castile has been captured. And the whole plot of this book is centered around Isbeth, which we found out in Crown of Gilded Bones is Poppy's actual mother. So yeah, it's centered around Isbeth and also Malik, M-A-L-E-C, which is Castile's brother. And two of the main characters in this book are Poppy and Kieran, which is exciting because I... Honestly, I would like Kieran to get his own book, but that's a separate thing. So I'm just gonna dive straight into my opinion and my thoughts on this book. There are things that I really loved about this book and there are things that I didn't love. So The Crown of Gilded Bones, everyone knows if you've read it, it was not... It wasn't the best. It was very like info dumpy and the world building was lacking and... Yeah, at the time whenever I read that book, I still really enjoyed it for what it was. But whenever I went back to reread, um, I couldn't even get through Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. And I was like skimming through Crown of Gilded Bones. And yeah, I, I wasn't having like the best time. And so I was really scared to like pick this book up because I was just like, nervous. I just, I was like, is it going to be like another Crown of Gilded Bones where not much happens? Because when I think back on those books, I'm just like, I can't even remember what happens because nothing really happens like and un un until the end. When there's a lot of like conversation and banter, of course you're not going to remember what happens. You're not going to remember all those details because it's just kind of info dump information. I don't normally have to reread books before the next book comes out, but when it came to those, I was like, I can't remember shit. Whatever. I don't need to harp on it, but this one, I started reading the first five chapters um, the day before release day because she puts the first couple chapters on her website for, you know, you to like download or whatever. So I started reading them and I fell asleep like three times because I just like couldn't get into it. But here's the thing, I was really tired and it was daylight saving. So I'm like, I don't know if it was me or if it was the book. So I just talked a bunch about Poppy and I realized I wasn't recording. So that's fun. I think it was saying that like Poppy is overpowered and um, I think she is, even though she's, she's definitely overpowered in my opinion, I think she has matured a lot and she, she seemed mature in this book or at least I feel like she has grown a lot. Um, the only thing I really disliked about her is that she asked so many damn questions. Like, I'm like really over the whole question thing. And then also because I was spoiled, unfortunately, for a few of the things in this book, um, I went in with this mindset that like Poppy was going to be like this really horrible person. But that didn't turn out to be the case. Um, at one point, I did get mad at her for something. But like, it wasn't like a huge deal or anything. And 
like I got over it very quickly. I think this book starts to pick up around like chapter 25, 26. Um, the first like 25 chapters or so are just kind of, I feel kind of like indifferent about them. Like I'm not crazy about them. I don't love them, but I also don't hate them. It started to pick up and that's when I really started to actually enjoy myself reading this book. Basically chapter 25 and on, I really, really enjoyed, which um, let me see what part that is in the book. So a little bit more than halfway through, I'm not saying the first part of the book was bad, but I think it was definitely better than Crown of Gilded Bones. Also on release day, I was seeing things and I was like, yeah, do I even want to read this book? Because I was already scared to read this because I was like, I feel like it's, I don't know. I was just, I was very nervous that it wasn't going to be like what I was hoping it would be. And so I started seeing those reviews and I was like, well, damn, like, should I keep going? And I'm really glad that I kept reading because when it comes to something I'm enjoying, I never want to like base my opinion off of somebody else's opinions. Now, I think it's good to talk to other readers and to your friends and things like that and to discuss things I think is good. But when it comes to forming your opinions, your opinion can really be swayed by the opinion of others. So if you see everyone hating it, you're going to go in with like either lower expectations or you're going to see, you know, everything that they're pointing out and then you're not going to enjoy it as much. Like whatever. And so, yeah, I kind of went in with like much lower expectations. But overall, like I enjoyed myself reading this book. Um, I'm glad I read it. It was definitely slow to start out. Like I said, do I think it's worth reading if you've read all the other four books? Yes. Like if you're already four books into the series and you're thinking about reading the book, just read it. Um, unless you like look up spoilers and, you know, see things that don't make you happy and you know you're not going to like it, then yeah, skip it. I don't know. I, you do you. Like I, I really don't care what people choose to do. All I know is like I want to finish the series so like that's probably what I'm going to do. A lot of the issues that are in the previous books are also in this book so like the modern language is is even more heavy in this book than it was in previous books uh, and I know that bothers a lot of people and I get that. Like I totally understand that. That's not something that is going to keep me from reading the series. This is just a series that I've had a lot of fun with and I don't take it too seriously but I know a lot of people do and that's totally valid. Like I'm not trying to say anyone's opinion is invalid. Because it is. I've read the Lux series by Jennifer Armentrout and really enjoyed it. It's not a high fantasy though. So I think Jennifer, her strengths lie in romance. I think she is struggling with the fantasy in the series and she's written like a hundred books. So like the woman obviously knows how to write, okay? And she's like half blind. She has like a, a, a degenerative eye disease, I believe, if that's like the correct term for it. So like she has issues with sight and so she definitely has editors like well she for one she's not self-published so she's not like out there hiring her own editor. From my understanding she has a publisher. The last third of the book is pretty wild um, and I couldn't put it down honestly. Really enjoyed it. We got a lot of answers to things in this book. I don't want to spoil anything but like we got some answers. So I think um, if you are aware of like that big spoiler and you're not opposed to it, re read the book because I I found it more enjoyable, a lot more enjoyable than Crowd of Killed Bones. Do I like it more than A Shadow in the Ember? Mm, probably not. But I was also really happy to be back with Poppy, Castile, and Karen. So if you made it this far in the spoiler free section, you can leave a dragon emoji because the cover kind of like has this like dragon kind of emblem. And I'm going to start talking about spoilers now. So if you haven't read the book, hop off. Or if you just want to hear spoilers, then keep watching. It's up to you. I believe I can fly. So the first thing I want to talk about before I forget 
is something that I wish we had kind of gotten an answer to by the end of the book that we didn't. And that is Tawny. So they kept saying Tawny seemed off, that like she seemed like cold and her eyes were color like bleak or whatever. And I, we never got to see like what was up with her. The whole time I was like, oh, Tawny is sus. Like something's gonna happen. She's gonna betray them or whatever. And then nothing ever happened with Tawny. So that was kind of weird. I wish that we had gotten Kieran's point of view. Like maybe if we just get another book of Kieran, his own book or something like that. And then we'll get his point of view. I don't know. I just, I thought it was kind of weird that Kieran was such a big part of this book, but we still didn't get his point of view. So I'm just going to like go through some of my notes here um, in chapter five. Uh, Poppy opens up this box and it had Cass's finger in it. Uh, this chapter also had some info dumping. Poppy was asking Reaver just like a shit ton of questions and it was so annoying. If I'm gonna be honest, like I was like, okay, the whole like asking question thing was kind of funny to me in, in the earlier books. I was like, oh, that's so quirky, whatever. Kieran is like annoyed at her for asking questions and it's like kind of funny. But now I'm like over it. I'm over the whole like asking questions thing. Like I just like am annoyed by that. And then in chapter six, they're finding out about this like shadow in the ether thing. They plan on going to Casadonia to go rescue Cass. Chapter seven is like a mix between Castile and Poppy's point of view. Chapter eight is Poppy dreaming. It's kind of spicy. She like sees Castile in her dreams. And then she's like, oh, heartmates, we can walk in each other's dreams, whatever. And then a bunch of Drake and die. Um, so that was sad. And then there's like bent trees because an awakening. And then we find out that Vesa serves Isbeth and she's a traitor. And then Poppy kills Vesa. And then chapter nine has a bunch of info dumping. And then we meet Colas, which sounds like colonoscopy. I can't read Colas and not think of colonoscopy. I don't know why. So Colas is the first primal, primal of death. And then Ethos is the first primal of life, which we see them in Shadow and the Ember. And then the joining is mentioned for the first time in chapter nine. And then chapter 10, I said was a super boring chapter. It's just a bunch of talking and yeah, I said it was boring and that was 23% in by that time. So then chapter 11, it's Castile's point of view and his brother Malik shows up. It's just a bunch of talking and apparently Poppy's dagger is made from P Prila's bones. We find that out. And then there's kind of a foreshadow at the chapter, at the end of chapter 11, but I didn't see what that was. And then chapter 12, I said it was boring. Um, it's just talking to Castile's dad. It was all this like bullshit drama, whatever. Chapter 13, war is mentioned. Chapter 14 is just like utter chaos, the mist, and some war like fighting going on. Uh, chapter 15, Arden dies. And then there's Kieran kind of acting like a seal. And then chapter 16 through 18, I the only note I have is like there's a bunch of talking. So yeah. And then chapter 21 is Isbeth talking to Castile about the primal of life. Uh, Kieran telling Poppy she shouldn't feel ashamed for needing to feed. And then Poppy feeds from Kieran. Um, and then tw chapter 22, more talking. And then chapter 23, they finally get to Carcedonia. And then chapter 24, they're talking to Esbeth, more talking, and then they see Cass at the very end of that chapter. So then chapter 25, Poppy sees Castile and he's all like beat up and he's not in very good condition. And Castile is under bloodlust because he hasn't eaten so for so long. In chapter 26, we find out that Poppy has a sister, which no comment, honestly, like I'm whatever, Millicent. Um, and then Poppy, we find out, well, we don't really find out, but it's like, said again that uh, Poppy is the harbinger, harbinger foretold. I'm probably saying that word wrong, but. And then chapter 27, um, it's more like Malik and Poppy talking, um, Blood Queen and Poppy talking. And then we get Castile's point of view. This chapter is kind of a mess. Um, and then this is the chapter that the Rev stabs Cass to drain the rest of the blood from him. Um, so then, and Chapter 29, we get the Blood Queen making threats and they're gonna fight their way out. And then they're fighting knights and revenants. And then they they end up in the cellar, which I was like, why is, is it the cellar? It's, I don't know, it was kind of funny to read the cellar. Cause it was like, they were saying cellar, but 
yeah, it's spelled S-E-L-L-A. And then Malik shows up to help them get cast, which was interesting because we didn't trust Malik, but then I was like, oh, okay, are we gonna trust him now? Like, is this a thing? Are we doing this? And yeah, it was a thing. So th I thought that was actually really cool. And then they come across Castile and Bloodlust. So this is when they come across him in chapter 30. And then this was when I started being like, okay, I'm actually really loving the book. And they take Cass to Clarissa and Blaze or Blaz. I don't know how that, his name is. I, I'm assuming it's Blaze because who is, who would name somebody Blaz? That's not cute. Then we find out Malik his real name is Elaine. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So this was 63% into the book. And then in chapter 31, Cass feeds from Poppy. And I also really love that, y'all, that chapter was good. I love chapter 31. Chapter 32 also. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, they, they finally get to Wayfair. Which, by the way, Wayfair, like, Wayfair.com, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so they finally get to Wayfair to get to her dad. And then Poppy like creates this like mist stuff. And then in chapter 34, Castile tells Poppy that Millie is her sister. And then there's like a group hug and we find out like Malik is, you know, keen on Millicent and that Poppy is a primal born of mortal flesh. And then chapter 35, what I just said it was a very important chapter that was about 70% away into the book. Um, and then we find out Malik which is Castile's brother, he is the dark one, and then Malik and Cass fight, which was like super funny, and like the banter around all of that was really funny. And then Isbeth shows up and she wants Malik. And then chapter 36, Callum wounded Kieran with a shadow stone and then put a curse on him. So then that's where the, uh, the joining comes into play because that's the whole reason why they want to have the joining is because the curse that was put on him. So Isbeth says, return with Malik or your precious woman dies. So then Poppy takes Malik's ring and then unfortunately Isbeth kills Clarissa and Blaze. So that was unfortunate. Um, so yeah, chapter 36 I thought was really, really good. Chapter 37, the joining is mentioned again um, and then Poppy's teeth start hurting and I immediately was like, I remember something happening in the previous books, I think with so who was it? I don't know. I, I, I'm i pretty sure I remember this happening. Um, it felt like deja vu. And then so they're in the Wisteria Woods and then there's a spicy scene and then Cass talks to Poppy about the joining and then you know he like explains everything to her and then she decides to do it. And then chapter 38 they're they're greeted by the Wolven and I really enjoyed that scene. I enjoyed that whole chapter. And then chapter 39 we find out like something is really really sus with Tawny. Like it's been repeated at this point I think and then Cass has a reunion with his dad and I also said that I really love this chapter and that there's some strategizing that goes on but it was done really like well and really entertaining and then they're talking about how they want to you know return Malik to his brother Iniktos and then chapter 41 these like germs show up whatever and they're actually centuries that are like filled with serpents and they're like super freaking scary and shit. Chapter 42, Poppy's fangs were about to come in. And then chapter 43, they return to Padonia and the joining is about to happen and it's like building up. And then chapter 44, the, the joining happens. Was it done perfectly? No, but I still really enjoyed it. It kind of was just kind of like they fed from each other and it got very like erotic and sensual, but not in like a... It wasn't like a reverse harem kind of thing at all like it it was done in a way that like the the ritual or whatever felt very like special and it didn't feel like sloppy to me personally that's just how I feel about it I really enjoyed it and I was just like reading every word like it was just I don't know I really liked it so in chapter 47 they meet with Isbeth and they bring, you know, her Malik's casket and then they open up the casket and Malik, it looks like really rough and uh, not very good. And then they take the curse away from Kieran and then Isbeth, plot twist, stabs Malik with the shadow stone. And then after this, I was like very confused. Um, a lot of the things that were talked about after this, like I was just like, what is being said? Like, I'm so confused. Um, and then Cass takes, Column's heart out of his chest and Column obviously he 
he keeps coming back to life when people kill him so it's kind of funny and that was so that was funny um and then like death destruction and then colas like i don't know that chapter was just like it was entertaining but then some of it was confusing and then chapter 48 like Delano dies, but then like obviously later like he he comes back and then Poppy hits Isbeth in the head with a crown, which was really funny. Um, and then chapter 49, Isbeth dies. And then chapter 50 is I think the last chapter and Poppy has fangs now and Delano is back and Emil and Hisa and Niall, Neil, I don't know how you say his name. And then like the Reaver, we find out his nickname is Reaver Butt, which was kind of cute. Um, and then, so Nectus and Jadis are there, and well, not Jadis, but, like, she's talked about. And then we find out Millicent ran off, which is interesting. Um, I don't think that we got answers to, like, why she ran, no, we definitely didn't get answers, so I'm curious to see, like, what's going on with her. And then we get stuff about Colas, Nictos, etc. Like a bunch of, there was a lot of info dump in this chapter, I feel like. And it ends with Colas being freed and now like they basically have to, in the next book, they're probably just going to have to like go and find and kill Colas. I don't know how they're going to do that, but whatever. But yeah, so that was kind of like a wrap up of the whole book. But the reason I wanted to do it like that is because kind of a lot happens in the second, like, well, the, the last third of the book, a lot happens, and I really enjoyed the last third. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed being back with Poppy and Cass and Kieran and, like, all the banter. So, yeah, that's my review for The War of Two Queens. Um, I hope you have enjoyed watching this. Um, if you made it this far, you can leave a white heart emoji. And yeah, let me know how you feel about this book. I know a lot of people are really upset with it and your opinion is totally valid. I'm really sad that a lot of the fandom are unhappy with this book. Um, and I think that's like really, that really sucks because I know a lot of people love the first, like at least the first book and a lot of people love the second book too. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. I will see you guys later in my next video.